Good evening everybody, Calm Biker here and it's a lovely evening so we're escaping on the bike, me and Mrs C, there's a shadow over there it's nice to get out, nice to get out as a couple and we're going to go and find somewhere to have a cup of coffee or something probably by the seaside, escape a bit of this heat go somewhere a little bit cooler because it's really hot today went out for a run this morning the pair of us and we were well uh, perspiring I think is the the term that the ladies prefer whereas I was sweating like a pig just been watching a video uh, by Lazy Boy Rider and I was um, compelled to do a response video for him mainly because I entirely disagree with almost everything he said in his video <laughs> Now don't take this the wrong way Mr Lazy um, A lot of videos I entirely agree with you But on this one I entirely disagree I think some of the factual things he said were slightly incorrect But also the whole argument And as you'll have no doubt seen from the title to this video It's about should cyclists have insurance And he made the argument that they should uh, there was a couple of the factual things just to get out of the way um, because these were arguments he made. I mean one thing as he was riding along he saw a cyclist on the road and he said something detrimental about the cyclist and then said he should be on the path. Now I can't say anything about the path that was there at the time but I think it's important to say that cyclists in general apart from where it's explicitly said otherwise are not allowed to ride on the path it's illegal uh, there's probably a video in that one but it might be a video I need to do whilst out cycling and for full disclosure I'd like to point out I am a cyclist so some of this is from purely personal reasons uh, another thing he said was that he was behind a cyclist or some cars behind a cyclist and they were slowing the cars down and the cyclist didn't give way and they should have well no that's not true either Cyclists are road users like any other and don't have to give way to anybody uh, apart from at designated give way points where cars should give way to cyclists and cyclists should give way to cars depending on the give way signs and lines and what have you on the road but that wasn't really my biggest worry with this whole cyclist and insurance thing because I think if enough people say it the government might take heed not because they think cyclists should have insurance but because they see it as a potential revenue stream and uh, you know, never give a government an opportunity to see a place for gathering yet more money off us in tax and whatnot. And never give an insurance company another opportunity to rip people off either, because they're bloody good at it. God, I said a swear there, a minor swear, but it shows you how I feel about this topic. I think just insurance for cyclists is wrong. From a purely personal point of view, I already insure three vehicles. I don't want to have to insure another two. Um, I already pay plenty and the government takes a 20% tax on it um, and you know it, it's already expensive enough in this country to get around as it is you know insurance is ridiculous petrol prices at the minute are ludicrous I mean I, I filled up earlier it's £1.30 a litre and we don't need more spending on that but my real point on the cycling is if we have to insure cyclists, well, we, I mean, you, you can, by the way, you can have insurance as a cyclist if you want. You can actually pay a few quid and get insurance for you, your bicycle, and anybody that you might hit while cycling. And the vast majority of cyclists won't get it, mainly because they're riding a bicycle that, you know, the vast majority of people, it's worth a few hundred quid. Uh, some cyclists get it because insurance for a bicycle, a high-end bicycle, is worthwhile. Because if you're in an accident on a bicycle, it's a good chance your, your bike's going to be ruined. And if you've spent seven or eight thousand pounds on a bicycle, or more, I mean, I know somebody who has built his own bicycle, who's pretty serious into it as a sport, who's spent upwards of fifteen thousand pounds on his bicycle. So ensuring that against theft, damage, whatever it might be, accidents, is clearly worthwhile but insuring my 300 quid bike against that probably isn't worthwhile 
Insurance against theft when it's at home isn't worthwhile because it's covered on my house insurance. And if I ride into a car, and let's be clear, most cyclists are not out there trying to have collisions with cars in the same way most bikers aren't trying to have collisions with cars because we know who comes off worst. But if you have a collision with a car, the damage you're going to do to that car is almost certainly tiny. So if you were going to hit a car, you might put a dent in it, you might scratch it a bit, but you're talking in the vast majority of cases about tiny damage that's going to come out to a few hundred quid. That's under what most people would claim for on, on insurance anyway. And if I hit you on my bicycle, if I hit your car, or if I'm in my car and a bicycle hits me and does a bit of scratching and a bit of denting, I'm not going to want a claim on insurance. I'm going to want that person to stick his hand in his pocket and hand over a few hundred quid to do the repairs because if you claim, even if it's their fault, your insurance premiums go up. So I think, you know, it's probably not worth it anyway. Having said that, if I do hit you whilst on my bicycle, my house insurance will cover it. Because my house insurance generally covers my bicycle and any damage I do whilst on it. So, you know, it, it kind of doesn't make sense anyway in the vast majority of cases. Getting away from that though, you've got to think about other things. Who rides bicycles? Now some people, uh, people like me, they've got a car, they've got a motorbike maybe, and they just enjoy riding a bicycle for health, for fitness, just for getting around when it's not worth getting the bike out, whatever it might be. It's a different experience, isn't it, to driving or riding uh, a motorbike. Um, so those people, I suppose, are kind of in the insurancey type people anyway, you know, they've already bought insurance hopefully for their other vehicles. But who else? A lot of times it's people who don't have a vehicle other than a bicycle because they can't afford one. Or because they're not old enough to have one. You know, so your, your 11 or 12 year old cycling to school on his bicycle, is he supposed to have insurance? Or she? Legally they can't even make a contract, so having insurance is meaningless. Um, so what are we going to do with those people? Are we, do we say that you only have to ins have insurance below or above a certain age and below you're exempt? But those people are probably less careful anyway. I know at that age I was. And they're probably involved in more accidents. I know I was. I've bounced off the bonnets of cars a few times. Um, mainly because of bicycles being hard to see. And I've had cars just turn right into my path. Um, but, you know, do we, do, well, do we want to discourage those people from riding bicycles? Do we want to say, sorry, if you can't afford uh, insurance, you, you've got to walk? You know, you're not allowed to get around quickly. Is that fair? Do we want to, do we want to discourage younger people from getting on two wheels? Because there's not enough people getting on motorbikes nowadays. You know, that's becoming a dying thing, isn't it? So do we really want to discourage people from being used to two wheels, from making that step up maybe as a teenager from a bicycle to a moped and then as a later te teenager from a moped to a motorbike and then ultimately when they're getting into the 20s getting on a proper bike. Do you want to discourage that? I understand the argument that if you hit a cyclist and it's their fault that you shouldn't be out of pocket. But I have to say, there's a lot of other insurances cover that anyway. And also there was another another small point to pick up Mr. Lazy Boy on, was that just because you don't have insurance doesn't mean that you're out of pocket if you, if you hit that person. For one, if you hit somebody and it's their fault, I mean, if you hit somebody, it's probably the wrong terminology. If you're involved in a collision and it's their fault and they're a cyclist, just because it doesn't have insurance doesn't mean you can't claim against them. You can sue them, you can take them to a small claims court, or you can just say give us the money or I will take it to a small claims court. And if you're incapable of finding that person because they've just ridden off, and to be fair my experience of 
cycle incidents is as a cyclist and as I say I've been hit a few times and usually it's the driver that just clears off um, but you know just my my experience doesn't make for reality it doesn't make that be the average so but even if you do have a collision with a cyclist and your car is damaged you can actually claim through the motor insurance board it's the same as if you hit an insurance an uninsured driver so it's not even like you're out of pocket though again I think more likely is you'll get your 50 quid out and get yourself down to chips away and get that scratch repaired rather than put your insurance up by £100 a year for the next five years and potentially lose your no claims bonus it's just not worth it as you might guess in this case I do completely disagree with Lazy Boy Rider um, that said he's got a good ch channel um, and he's well worth a watch and you might agree with him because I suspect a lot of people are going to disagree with me but I will just say if, if you do disagree with me you can't then complain about all the fat people who should get on a bike and go for a ride <laughs> what you can complain about is the lack of cycle paths and the lack of um, actually getting cyclists off roads because uh, I'm all in favour of that for, um, for safety I think it's safer to be separated from the drivers because some drivers are lunatics um, one last point I do wonder what the logical conclusion is because if we're saying that basically everybody who has to be on a road would have to have insurance do we have to cover pedestrians who need to cross the road as well or do we need to bring in a law like you used to see I don't know if it still exists in America but you used to see it in the films where you had laws against jaywalking um, and then limit people I suppose the problem is I just I think it's unfair to limit people in the end I'm kind of a libertarian and I think maybe people not having insurance in general might be a better thing and that's a completely different video but maybe if people didn't all have insurance they might be a bit more careful they might not go into bends like this 40 miles an hour signposted ones at somewhat more than 40 miles an hour just for the fun of it <laughs> it's not a speed limit though it's an advisory <laughs> yeah I do wonder what the logical limit to this is you know does everybody have to be insured do pedestrians have to be insured or the laws have to change um, I'm not so sure there's also the thing about cyclists paying road tax and all those kind of things but again that's a different video I think anyway let me know what you think in them there comments tell me how wrong I am thank you for watching everyone ride safe look out for cyclists and I'll talk you all again soon